Good morning. Welcome to June here at our suburban homestead. Today I'm out here in my front yard, but it's not going to be about the front yard today. It's going to be about the backyard vegetable garden, but I had to stop and give you just a quick look at all the beautiful flowers that are growing in my front yard right now. It's stunning. So, oh, and I can smell those peonies and this Daphne. We'll just take a brief walk through. Then we're gonna go see what's grown in the vegetable garden. This is not supposed to be a front yard garden tour. I'm just gonna show you some of the stunning flowers. So we had a pretty dry spring and now that the peonies are in bloom, of course it decided to rain. They are nonetheless stunning. This Daphne is huge, right by our front door, and so fragrant. Bush. It's just stunning this year. These blooms are so gorgeous. They're a lot of times are just covered in ants though, so I don't bring them in very often. Oh, they're so gorgeous. More peonies. We got so lucky with how beautiful this place was when we moved in. There was tons of perennials, all these peonies and roses. Here we've got my front yard onion patch, some garlic in the back there. These are doing well. What their red onions over here are doing really well. Uh-oh, it's putting on a little um, flower there. Kind of early for that. I'm thinking it's not so big down there. My goal is to try to grow some onions this year. Not been too successful in the past. I just had to show you a bit of this beautiful front yard before I get to the vegetable garden. Check out those hydrangeas. Can you say massive and gorgeous? Because they're both. Here I've got my new raspberry patch. Um, same raspberries from where my potatoes are now, but I uh, moved them here and they are loving it. This hillside gets a lot of water because we, uh, that's up elevation. So everything comes down and these get tons of water from that hillside. Um, great place for them. So I need to get in there and cut down that grass more, cardboard, sheet mulch. Um, I should have done that like when I first started the project, but I didn't. And now it's gonna be even more difficult, uh, but it sure does need it. So I'm really excited about that. Those blueberry, or blueberries, sorry, I'm looking at blueberries this way. Those raspberries are really gonna pop this year. There are a ton of fruits on them already. So this is where the raspberries were last year. This is the, if you've never seen our uh, garden before, so we're Puget Sound Garden Life and our family is working on growing as much of our own food as we can on our suburban homestead. So we had these retaining wall terraces put in uh, the summer we first moved in here. And uh, there were in that bed with the pine shavings there you can see that was where the raspberries originally were. And here we've got strawberries but that just wasn't really a safe spot for the raspberries because the kids would always be walking on the edge trying to pick them and we'll see in a minute, it's got a steep side right there. Uh, so now there's potatoes and still some raspberry runners that I uh, missed, but the potatoes are doing great. Let's go look. My strawberries are on fire this year. I'm so excited. They are loaded with fruit and it's just a battle with the squirrels and now bunnies, I saw a bunny in the yard. We've never had problems with bunnies in our yard because we have had a dog. She has passed away and now the bunnies are in my yard. So down here you can see there are some uh, raspberry runners that are still popping up. I need to pull those, um, but the potatoes are looking fabulous. Multiple different varieties throughout here. I think there's four different varieties. Um, I planted some bush beans in this space here because not all those potatoes came up and then some of them started coming up eventually. But these bush beans are just doing horrible. Um, I think I had them in their uh, 
I grew, I grew them in a seed cell tray and I think I left them in there too long because I planted some more of these at the community garden and they're also really struggling so they should probably just be pulled but uh, I won't be putting anything in place I'm just kind of leaving them there there are a few flowers that are starting on the potatoes they're so cute I'm really looking forward to this whole thing flowering out so here's the edge of that retaining wall and you can see it's not a great place for having kids picking raspberries and falling off look at this this is the all blue potato. Oh, what a beautiful flower. A few volunteer sunflowers in here. Look at the peas. What a fun way to watch the peas. Oh, apparently I need to get in here and do some harvesting. Ooh, check out that view. We've had some gorgeous weather lately and I haven't had any time to film because it's been so beautiful and bright that it's too sunny when I do have time. So I got up early this morning and we've got this overcast day. It was raining earlier, super gusty wind, really windy last night. And, uh, but the lighting's great. So I'm so glad to be able to finally get out here and give you an update of what the garden looks like. We've been harvesting. Oh, I should probably go get my harvest basket. This lilac potted threw off some good blooms this year. Whoa, this is beautiful. It like grew a ton in the last couple of days. This rain, so we had rain today. Golly, when was the last rain? I don't know. It's been raining off and on. It hasn't, it hasn't been too dry, hasn't been too wet. Um, wow, it's beautiful in here. I'm going to go get my harvest basket and then we're going to come back and do some harvesting and talk about what's planted here. I thought I might as well just take you along with me to go get the harvest basket. You can see a peak of my deck. I'm going to do a different video of my container gardening and annuals on the deck, but it'll be fun to just see a peak of it. So this is where I had all my plants, my nursery for my plant sale, which I had such a good time doing a plant sale. Here's some clips you can check to see how that went at the beginning of May. So we're set up for our plant sale here in our garage, just like you would for a garage sale or yard sale. Actually, we're not in the garage, we're just in the driveway. And I've got my posters up with our pricing and let me just show you what we've got for the sale. So what I'm most proud of, which I haven't sold any of yet, are these planters. These are the uh, dollar store three tier planters and you can get one of these levels for a buck. So it's super affordable. And I've got these, this variety I'm calling the taco salad planter because it's got this salad bowl lettuce on the top uh, green bunching onions and then cilantro so you can just pick as you want and make yourself a nice little taco salad this is the greens planter which is I'm just blown away with how beautiful it's turned out uh, it's got the new red fire lettuce on top arugula in the center and then the green salad bowl on the bottom so now that the plant sale is over I've got a few plants left I'm just not ready to leave let go of yet um, but we've been working on cleaning and reorganizing the deck let me show you some of my beautiful flowers Ooh, this is looking gorgeous this is just a quick look of everything that's growing up here lots of food on this deck and i can't wait to show you another time get that basket all right I'm back I got my harvest basket I am ready to get some food out of this place and show you what's growing I'm just gonna give you a kind of like a overall tour here this is a mix of different brassicas 
there's asper brock, broccoli, cauliflower, no not cauliflower, romanesco, which is a cauliflower, but let's get specific here. And on this side, we've got peas up on the trellis. There are tomatoes. These are all determinate tomatoes. They're um, bush varieties. We've got Ace 55 and, uh, oh, what's that fancy Roma? San Marzano. And uh, those will all be used for salsa, canning, etc. And then throughout the tomatoes, I've got lettuce, flowers. Um, there's some cucumbers already. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of what's growing here. Let's take a look at how gorgeous it is. These are the suckers that plague my garden in the front yard. They're constantly eating all my little flowers. Now, I'm harvesting broccoli with um, pruners. You could just snap it off, but I don't have a ton, so I'm not in a big rush, and I really like to be precise so I can make sure that I leave as much there for side shoots to come back. This is gonna be delicious. The boys have really been loving the broccoli. Bill, me, we love broccoli. My kids eat like four vegetables and broccoli is one of them. So I gotta learn how to master it. I'm done with my harvesting in that terrace and I wanna show you what I'm super proud of. This terrace right here was made out of old big rocks that were previously in the yard when it was just a hill and they kind of had those sporadically through the hill for stability and mild terracing. Uh, and this is all just gravel. Gravel, bricks, fill dirt, stuff that they just, you can imagine, push down the hill. Um, not a fertile place but I put in some herb starts over the past two years and put them in as really small, like one inch starts, one inch, two inch, and they have thrived. So let's go look at them. Next up is my South Terrace. I call that one the North Terrace. I call this one the South Terrace. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, did I go crazy with brassicas? Yeah, I did. And what I've realized over the past few years is that if I really want a lot of broccoli, I need to plant like way more than I anticipate wanting uh, just because I lose a lot. I didn't show you down there. There were two of those uh, Asperbrock plants that just up and died the other day. It was super windy and knocked the plants over, then dried the soil out and somebody forgot to water and uh, they gave up the ghost. Um, so it just happens. And especially with my spring plants, particularly because all this wind and the weather's just changing. I really haven't had any problems with cabbage loopers, but a lot of times, normally I'm picking those off like crazy. So I guess uh, the spinosad I used might be helping. Um, I've got cauliflower. Let's get a closer look. You don't want to see me. I've got some volunteer sunflowers. The sunflowers that grew in that spot last year were stunning. So let's let them come back and they are next to cauliflower this is early snowball cauliflower does anybody know why it's turning purple this year i had some of my romanesco turn purple as well this little cilantro has been growing under there i have a ton of kohlrabi and sprouting broccoli and it's exploded it really needs to be thinned out so <clears throat> that's what i'm going to be doing today is harvesting kohlrabi that is ready like that one down there and thinning out any that 
don't look like they're going to be successful. I had a few that look like they had, oh, there's some broccoli. I got to be careful in here. I'm breaking stuff. Anyways, it, we've got purple kohlrabi. We've got white kohlrabi. We've got sprouting broccoli. We've got cauliflower. Um, we just got everything over here. I planted so many starts this year and I just, they were ready before the plant sale. So I just planted them. Wow. Wow. And over here, we've got, I'm doing a lot more green beans this year. Let me come to the end and give you a look from down here. So, um, these are each like 13 feet. So this is 39 ish, 40 feet long. Um, and lots of lettuce needs to be harvested, some kale, and this is green beans. Last year, this was green beans as well. And then I had two sections of tomatoes last year. The indeter pardon, the determinants were there, and then the cherries and a couple slicers were in that last panel. So that last one still has cherries. This one has beans and carrots and lettuce, beans, lettuce, and kales. So my family really loves green beans so, and I really love tomatoes, but um, I really want to provide for my family. And so I'm working on growing a lot of the things that my kids really like to eat. So I'm just going to jump in and start harvesting and show you all my goodies. Whee, you're looking good. Or they germinate. Here is my collection of cherry tomatoes. We've got large red cherries, bumblebees, sun golds, and I think that's it. Lots of romaine. I really love a nice crunchy romaine more alyssum. This is the salad bowl lettuce. Very prolific. Okay, so these, look at this sucker way at the bottom though. Um, the cherry tomatoes, I prune the suckers off of. Um, I'm going to let that one grow because it's like a whole nother tomato plant. But I am going to prune off or pinch off. Where are we here? This one right there. Um, with cherry tomato plants I'm less concerned about having just one main vine uh, because it takes less energy to create a cherry tomato sized fruit versus a slicing tomato. This one is branching off right there and has two main vines so I'm going to um, pinch off any other, well I'm going to try to keep up on other suckers so that this plant just has those two main vines. This plant looks like it also just branched off and so I want to make sure I keep all the other ones pruned and it just it just makes it easier to maintain your plants, gives you better airflow and Okay, what do we got here? Oh golly, we got all sorts of... Oh, I think one of the babes is calling for me. So I'm gonna leave that to branch out. Just a second. I had to take a quick little break for breakfast. Oh golly, guys. Oh, it just does not pop on camera right here. Let me get a little closer. Look at that salvia. I should have staked it up or like tied it up or something. It's kind of falling over, but not everything can be perfect. And gardening has taught me that. Okay, so I think we showed you everything that's grown here. I was showing you that I needed to get in there and prune off the suckers on my tomatoes. I left a few, but I had a lot to remove. And now I need to get into 
harvesting that kohlrabi. So come along. One of the things I love most about this garden is that I can stand down here on this gravel path terrace that we have here and harvest my vegetables at waist height. I love it. So I'm gonna get started from right here. So if you're not familiar with kohlrabi, this is purple kohlrabi and it does not grow side shoots. So you're gonna have one, you're gonna harvest one bulb and that's gonna be what you get from the plant. And then you're just, you can cut it off at the soil base and just even leave those roots in there and toss some compost over it when you wanna plant your next uh, crop. And for me, that's gonna be bush beans. Um, so kohlrabi, you eat this ball right here, a stem, like spherical stem. And we like to cut it up into like stick sizes or french fry sizes and roast them. It's great. Um, so I am just wanted to show you that if you've never tried kohlrabi before. It's similar to like the stem of a broccoli in texture and flavor, but uh, more crunchy. It's, it's um, yeah, I don't know. It's good. You should try it. <laughs> give y'all a better look down from the bottom show you what I'm harvesting what I'm sending out all right so I could have let these grow larger but it really needs to be thinned out I plant things pretty dense and as I said earlier this year I planted even more and so pulled out the ones they get the most hey buddy Nice! I'm glad you're using that rope. So the ones here in the front I've harvested. You can see I just cut them right at the base. And yeah? What, what kind of training exercises are you doing? Ninja sneaking. Awesome. Like this when you can't see. There you go, you found them. How do you open it up and get that pea? Well, I don't know if, if that one has peas in it yet. Most of it's just the shell. So I'm harvesting the bigger ones in the front. It's going to open up things in the back to let these start filling out. Now this one I wanted to show you. This one uh, I'm kind of iffy on. So it should, they should have a nice bulb right above the ground and it should go from like root to Kelly no thank you to just shaping out but these ones they got whipped around by the wind and their stalk is uh, this like inverted cone here and most of the time those end up being woody and not tender and delicious but it's kind of starting to form more of a bulb up here so we'll you know, I'm gonna give it a chance and see what happens so the next area that I'm gonna thin out is right here. So you can see this is what the other one looked like before I harvested those ones in the front. And these are just jammed. They've got the butternut squash underneath them. I've got spaghetti you squash. Love that Daddy put some white things here? Yes, I love that Daddy put down that weed block on our pathway. It's wonderful. Um, so butternuts over here. I'm gonna get these harvested. It's gonna open it up for the butternut and it's also gonna open it up for the row of kohlrabi on the back. Um, I'm also just gonna do some general pruning of leaves that look like they're dying or yellowed or just huge giant leaves look that are- up here. Wow, look at that climbing! Uh, that are in the way and blocking light from others. what a character um, so pruning when you're doing high intensity spacing in your vegetable garden pruning is important I mean pruning is important in general but especially when you're doing high intensity spacing it just really needs it so I'm gonna get to work it's 
it's looking so much better over here. I got a lot harvested. Uh, the marigolds are popping out now. Give them some more room and more light. These butternut squash are looking wonderful. Last year I had spaghetti squash here and had a ladder that they grew down. It was just stunning. I might, I'll, I'm probably just gonna let them down on the bricks this year. They, they would really benefit though from some support above the bricks because when they're really young and they're growing against these retaining wall bricks, it does scab and scar the skin a little bit. Never, well I shouldn't say never, but I didn't have any problems with them become those spots becoming rotten. Uh, all the squash, I still have some left, are doing great. Um, but it would be nice if they didn't have those because they would be less likely to have any spoilage. Um, so I could do some sort of like hardware cloth, chicken wire, just to give them some support over there, but I'm not gonna be stressing about that this year. Oh, these marigolds, I'm so happy with them. So it just got a lot cleared out in here and we'll let these size up so I can get them harvested and get the bush beans put in afterwards. Finn, why don't you come show the basket of the kohlrabi? The little octopus, octopi. Yes, cut off all the leaves and who's getting all the leaves? The chickens are getting this big old bushel of leaves, bushel basket, whatever this thing is. These pop up yard waste things are a lifesaver, especially for our house because we have to come down all these steps to get to our garden and I can't roll, I mean, I could roll a yard waste container or something like that, but you know that would turn out bad. Um, so to get all my yard waste up these stairs, I just grab it, put it on my back and carry it. Uh, this brand, I forgot the brand of it, but in the notes, I'll put a link to a video I did all about this bag and the brand name. Uh, another thing I've got to show you real quick, and then we're going to wrap this video up, is our hose link that we have here at home. We put up a video of us installing the hose link retract retractable hose at the community garden that they donated for us. And we had bought this over the winter because I saw it on Garden Answer and just thought that would be perfect. For this house, because we don't have irrigation and I would just drag the hose down these stairs and leave it on the stairs and it was dangerous and always in the way. So right now I'm just dragging the hose down. I pull it down as far as I can, locks into place. And usually I'll take a bunch of like extra pulls to give me the length I need to get down there and back there. But for the sake of showing you how amazing this hose link is, I just pulled out some of it. So when I'm putting it away, all I have to do, give it a quick tug and just woo, run up the stairs with it. And here we go. Boom, the hose is put away. It's amazing. All right, well, we've got a busy day ahead of us. We're gonna go have some fun with some friends, see a new house they moved into, play in their yard, and go on an adventure today. Thanks so much for checking out the garden. Today's June 4th, no, kidding, June 5th, and we have had a great spring and are really enjoying all the vegetables we have and can't wait for the summer veggies to start coming in. Thanks so much for checking out our Puget Sound Garden Life. If you want to see more of what we'll be growing this summer, go ahead and click subscribe. Whoa, goes a bird. They've got a nest. Got a nest in there. Anyways, if you want to see more of us, hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching.